Hi there, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Hoping you're having a good math day. Thank you for watching this clip on graphing a hyperbola. Graphing a hyperbola is really what I call looking for a box. The box is referred as the asymptotes. Okay, so asymptotes give us us the guideline to draw the curve. Okay, so the curve, first thing, there are a couple key things you need to know. Number one, we're looking for a box because box give us the asymptotes, asymptotes give us the curve. Second thing you need to know, the key point, is that curve is on the positive term. Let me explain what that means. A hyperbola could be a X shaped, that's on the X axis. Or it could be flipped a version of X shape, but it's on the Y axis. Okay, so for our term, it's on the X shaped. So the curve is going to look like literally X. Okay. Well, maybe that's a good way to remember. If positive term is X, it then looks like X. If a positive term is Y, then it kind of looks like a Y. I know I'm exaggerating here a little bit, but it does kind of look like a Y. All right. Second, uh, that's the second thing. Third thing is actually, I hopefully not going to pile up too much. So here is two squared. That's on my x-axis. So I'm going to mark two units. This one I'm going to rewrite it as three squared. So that's on the y-axis. And here is my box. Okay, remember what I said earlier drawing a hyperbola is really all about finding the box. And once I have the box, the diagonal lines give me the asymptotes and in turn gives me the curve. Okay, so here's the point on the curve and then we're going to draw, well, I am going to draw the to my best ability, here's my hyperbola curves. Okay, and then we have one more thing we need to find, that's this thing called a focus. I'm going to call it F, and I'll tell you in a little bit why I always tell my students, don't bother with C, because usually in a lot of textbooks, full size are described in plus minus C and zero. Okay. In order to find the C, it's related to A is equal to 2 and B equal to 3. A lot of students say, well, it looks like Pythagorean theorem. It's a bad idea to go where you think looks like a Pythagorean theorem. And here's the reason why. We have a similar situation in ellipticals where the C is inside. In this case here, C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. Then you kind of get stuck. Okay, so a couple years ago, I started telling students, don't worry about naming full size as a C. Here's what where instead you should focus on. Now notice here A is smaller than F. Okay, so F where the location of F is gonna be bigger, therefore, is sum of the square of the two terms. Okay. Now similarly you can use the same strategy to avoid the the confusion when you're doing the elliptical ones where the F is inside, the focus is inside. And in there, you have A squared, whichever one is bigger, minus whichever one is smaller. Okay, so just using that one simple trick of staying away from the letter C, I know this doesn't sound as good, but using the letter F you can avoid a lot of trouble. Now back over here, we'll have a 4 plus 9 f squared. So f is equal to plus minus 13. So here are my full size. Over here and here, we have radical 13 and 0, and minus radical 13 and 0. All right, that's how we handle hyperbolas. Once again, from Tucson, Arizona, this is Phoenix Pan. If the video has been helpful, please comment, or I'd appreciate it, a thumb up. Till next time, have a confident day.